All right, take three. I, I've messed up this intro like three times already. Happy long weekend. I'm filming this on the long weekend. Can't believe summer is over. Like, where did it go? Anyway, if you're a returning viewer, glad to have you back. But I have to do this intro for my new viewers. So if you're new, my name is Dimitrios. I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mixture of education and entertaining content. So if you want to stay up to date, hit that like button as it tells YouTube to show this video to other viewers. You're actually doing other people a favor when you do that. And subscribe for more videos. That being said, before we begin, I do have a disclaimer because this excitingly is like my first I wouldn't they're not they're not a brand but they're a plugin but I'm gonna read word for word the disclaimer what they sent to me in the email the answer is a, a plugin and they reached out we're looking for youtubers that can produce a video review or tutorial of the answer <coughs> <coughs> the important thing though is that they're looking for an honest review as it can help improve the plugin. So we do not impose any requirements or what you say about the answer. And this is great. This is why I decided to say yes to this because they're not telling me what to do and I can actually give my honest opinion. And that transparency and authenticity is important for me to you guys. That's really important. So that's what I strive for on this channel. So in exchange for this video, they have provided me with a license for the plugin to obviously to be able to test it and review it properly. So if you think after this video that this plugin will be of value to you and this is something that you might use, then what they have done is they have given me a discount code of 10% off and you can find that in the description box down below and we'll be tongue tied. And if you do purchase it, I get a small kickback from it. So but there's no obligation to purchase the plugin is that if you find value from this. I also want to add that by no means I'm an editing wizard. These boys are lost. Like I can learn and edit new things, but editing is a whole... So credit to any of you who are actually amazing at editing. So what is Dehancer? Dehancer is a film emulation plugin for various editing platforms like DaVinci, Final Cut and Premiere Pro that allows video creators to give their footage a cinematic film-like look. It offers various film stock emulations, grain, halation and other features that can enhance your footage and make it stand out. By using Dehancer, you can transform your videos including drone footage into visually appealing content like a professional and artistic touch. They even have an iOS app which you can apply formulation to photos and videos. Now we're specifically looking at DaVinci today, but if you have another editing program that you use, like Premiere Pro or Final Cut, they do have a forum and manuals on their website to help you guide with installation and how it's used. There's also YouTube where you can type in Dehancer and learn and see other people's reviews and their tutorials. I do think this is the best way to learn anyway, or just playing around with it. So installation was pretty straightforward, just follow the instructions. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can access and add the film look to your footage. So normally in DaVinci, you would go to the color tab to color grade your footage. And this is the first way of accessing the answer. The other way is in the edit timeline. If you add, you can, it's probably better to add an adjustment layer than straight onto your footage so you don't ruin that. But if you add an adjustment layer, then you can go to effects and dehance and drag dehancer to the adjustment layer. And that way you can make all your adjustments on the adjustment layer and apply it to the whole timeline if you wish to drag it across. Now, if you are filming in D-Log M, I recommend that you use the free LUT from DJI to convert D-Log M to Rec 709 and then create a second node to add Dehancer enhancements on there. They do have a manual or a guidance on where the plugin should be installed within the node series, how you make your adjustments. This is something I'm still new at and I have to learn at, so I have to actually do, I will have to create a separate video on color grading in itself. So, as you can see here, I have some footage on a timeline, some drone footage I've taken with the Air 3. Uh, so I've already applied the Dehancer plugin to the first few clips and I used the adjustment layer as well to show the different styles. So, um, if I go to the color tab here, you can see that I created a second node. This was filmed in normal, by the way, so that's why there's no uh, conversion LUT, so I don't need it. 
But if I do command D, that will disable the Dehancer plugin. So this is what it looks like normally. And then with the adjustments I've already made, I just press command D again. And you can see it's added like grain, the colors have changed, there's halation, there's a bit of everything. And even if I press play, you can see it's very film-like. So this is now like, there you go. It's, it went from normal to dehancer, and then it's gonna fade out again. There you go. And that's back to normal again. And then it's gonna go, there you go. Faded in to film-like. I really like the 70 mil with the film. That looks really cool. So it's pretty simple. So uh, I'm gonna go back. We are going to start, let's do the night one. I haven't done the night one. Now in the color tab, uh, this is one way of doing it. Go to effects where it says Dehancer Pro. I'm just gonna drag that onto the node here and I created my second node. So again, using Command D, you can see the difference what it does here. And if we scroll to the top, our source input is Rec 709. That is what the input is. Obviously, like I said, if this was D-Log M, like this footage here, you'd have to create a, a node that uses the conversion LUT and then add Dehancer. So if I put this down here, then I add Dehancer on top. So let's go back to our footage of the CNE. And this is where you can make all your adjustments with the plugin. So you just literally go down the list. So it's a film emulation. You can see the adjustments it makes. You don't need to do much, very slight. Temperature, I might wanna make this warmer than cooler. It's, it was, it's in the summer basically. Let's add some tints. Let's, yeah, I think if we go more towards the right to add some more red let's go to film developer so contrast boost oh we have to enable it so that will give it a more matte look which i think might look better than just going dark so i'm gonna about there i mean if you don't if you're not sure on what any of these things do they the hansen do have a manual that does explain everything and again just Look on YouTube if you're not sure and it'll be able to explain what that is. But the best way is literally playing around with the plugin. Color separation, this doesn't do anything. Color boost, oh look at that, color boost is nice. I'm gonna, I wanna add some more color. I know we're going for a film look, but I wanna add more color. Now this is the best part. You have 63 film emulation profiles. So you got all these here, and I have created a list already, which I will put in the description box down below of some of my fav of some of my favorites. Uh, but the Cine Still 50 is quite nice. Cine Still 800 is quite nice. Where is the the Fuji Color 100? Ooh, that one's actually pretty dope. But let's go full screen. Yeah, let's do this one. This one's cool. So this one is the Fuji Chrome Velvia 100. Uh, push and pull will literally do a little, let's just put this down a little bit. It's more like exposure, tonal range. So this almost, you can see the highlights. This is almost like highlights. I wanna go up a bit. I don't want it to be blown out. Color density. Uh, yeah, that's a, this one's a tough one. Oh, it crashed. That's a first. Okay, we've seen, we've seen that. That is very interesting. All right, let's go back to this. Well, we, I, I'm screen recording as well. Okay, so it doesn't look like we've lost much. Uh, where were we? Uh, film compression, I think this is where we were. Profile, linear. Uh, so exposure, ooh, no, I wanna, uh, yeah, it's about there. There you go, reduce the saturation a little bit. Mind you, the print one we don't really need. Print is print. That's probably, so we can get rid of that. Hair, color head is pretty useful. We can change some of the colors a bit. Uh, again, I have to enable it. Make sure you enable it. So make some very, oh, there you go. That's a bit better. Add some green and add some yellow to this and blue. I think that, that's slightly better. Ooh, add some midtones. That's cool. And highlights. Yeah, add some highlights to get rid of some of the whiteness yeah drop that down a little bit how much impacts so we can probably like reduce this but no let's leave it there now film grain is obviously you've got different types of grain for film and iso i'm just going to leave this as standard 
but we can if we can turn that on and off uh, the same with halation look at that the halation will make a big difference because this is at night now i'm going to just do command d to turn it on and off but look at that that looks wicked the halation uh, and then bloom yeah look at that the bloom as well that's really cool i'm just going to keep it on 35 oh what's eight millimeter whoa look at the bloom on the eight millimeter that's mad all right let's keep it on 35 and then film damage so when during playing back and you see all the grain effects that's what this does you get there's going to be certain attributes that you're going to like more than others because others don't have much of an effect but the film damage is cool so if you're i know there's other LUTs available we'll get over to the pros and cons but the film damage is uh, pretty nice because you can make adjustments to that on the fly film breadth oh free film breathing so it's basically like in and out i've looked this up already so overlay some footage there what that actually does but we're going to add this as well uh, and then gate weave again uh, i've looked this up so essentially it's like the gate of the film and it's running through it was like wobbly and then you've got some vignetting so if you want to add if you want to add some vignetting so maybe just like that adjust the size of it how much feather aspect ratio uh we don't need to worry about this too much oh the output is how much of an effect this has you you go down to zero and that's what it looks like normally and as we bring it back up you can see how much of effect so do you want it a hundred percent or do you want it go down a bit and you can export this as like a pre preset lut i tried it out but it didn't really work maybe it's just lack of uh, education on my part if i go to full now so this is the effect we've done command d so what it looked normally and this is with the film applied. And if we press play, so this is just a static shot. So you can see it's uh, it's slowed down a bit. Now, what we're gonna do is just copy paste what we've done here to the next footage. So now if we press Command D, you can see what it looks like before and after up with the same effects, the exact same effects as I just played before and then press play. reset this so it seems to slow down the footage a bit as well Control v onto this node to so see what happens here there you go film effect so this is what it looks like before and this is what it looks like after i'm just going to apply this to all the footage That's pretty cool. So if I do Command D, that's nice. The pros and cons of the Dehancer plugin. So first, let's start with the pros. There is an overwhelming amount of film emulations here. You, you've seen now through this video that you have 63 film profiles, which is really extensive, and just all the different attributes there that you can make adjustments to, which is great. I would say there's somewhat simplified use and I do like the fact that there is a manual that you can access from their website and there's also YouTube videos from other creators which you can use to learn from. So that's another plus thing. And also it just, it gives you that enhanced footage and so you can now convert your drone footage onto the film look. Now let's talk about some of the cons. Well, we've seen already that the plugin did crash. Not to worry though, this they booted up no problem no issues there. I have heard though from other creators when I did watch their videos that they said it was very resource intensive. I haven't really experienced that. I have an M1 MacBook Pro, worked completely fine there. So the crash could just be a bug in the plugin. Didn't lose my footage, which is the great thing. So if you don't have a high-end PC, just beware. And the other thing is it's a paid plugin and it's not cheap. A lot of people have said that it's quite expensive. Like the plugin they have given me is the, the full range one, which is like 500 US dollars. I know that is a lot. From watching other creators, people have said that if you buy DaVinci Studio version, which is only 200, 300 bucks. Yeah, 295 US. If you buy DaVinci Studio version, people are able to emulate the film stuff with DaVinci's inbuilt effects and plugins. However, like I said earlier, that I'm not a wizard at editing. Ah! 
for me to do all that, it's gonna take me a lot of time to learn and to apply and to do all that. Da Vinci is a very, very overwhelming editing software. I'm still new, relatively new to it, but I like to keep things simple. So this plugin does help me, but it's, like, it's just really simple. I don't have to do anything. It's just a plugin and I like, mess around with attributes. I'm sure Da Vinci has that too, but I just don't know it that well. You can probably get other LUTs, but I don't know if they're customizable. You probably just apply it and that's it. So unless you want to do some more fine tuning, then maybe the answer is something you would be interested in or learning Da Vinci and their overwhelming attributes and fusion magic wizardry whatever it is like it, it's a lot if you haven't used Da Vinci before be prepared would I recommend this plugin do like its ease of use with the installation I thought that was pretty simple and the fact that you can do a lot of fine tuning however I like I said earlier I am not an editing pro I help I have a full-time job and I have my own side hustles so Time is of the essence here, so I don't have time to fiddle around with too many learning curves within DaVinci and adjustments and all this. Like, it's very overwhelming for me. I need to be able to get content out so you guys can see it. So I like to keep things simple. I like what this plugin can do in terms of just quickly install it and make your adjustments. You can export the LUTs. Um, there is a help guidance as well. So if you're stuck on anything, it's pretty much there. If you're in my position and you just want something easy, then yes but it is expensive. Would I pay $500 for it? Probably not. But then again, you can get the light version, which is less. I think that's only, yeah, there's a, there is a lifetime license, a light version for 200, which I think is a little bit more reasonable. However, if you put in the time and effort to learn in DaVinci and just get the studio version, you may be able to pull it off. But again, how much of that time do you need to invest to be able to learn to emulate the same thing. Whereas you just get the plugin, it's supposed to save you a lot of time. It's a difficult one. If you're just above the beginner stages and you wanna try and get to the next level and you like film emulation, then this is probably gonna be something you wanna go down. Maybe get the light version rather than the pro, unless you really want all the features. If you're an editing whiz and you know how to do all this, then yeah, this is probably not gonna be for you. Take that as you, as you wish. The fact that I have this plugin now, I do think I can get some use out of it. And they're only gonna improve it. So any feedback you give in the comment section down below is gonna be helpful for them to improve it. Whether that's efficiency in uh, resources, so it's not as resource intensive, maybe the price can come down. But again, your feedback, good or bad, is helpful for the hearts up. I, I really hope that helps. This has been a interesting video for me to make because I've had to play around with something and also educate how to use it. And I hope that's been fun. So if you're like me and you need a simple solution to add a film emulation to your footage, then remember to check out the description box down below for 10% off. Stay tuned for next week as we continue with reviewing the DJI F3 and we're gonna be covering night mode. Remember, if there's anything specific that you wanna learn about the DJI 3 and bring it up earlier in the series that I'm making, let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, YouTube recommends you should watch this next. See you in the next video. Peace.